sort of the deal at the end of session as far as something, you know, an area where you guys could have to make the concession? There is so much that can be done without a tax to uh, further our desire to get our, our balance, uh, our, our budget in balance. And you've heard me talk and others talk about the fact that a structural deficit is probably more desirable than taxing people of Alaska to fill every little gap that's that's in the budget because the budget's too big. And if you have a, a structural deficit, it, it should be smaller and it should be further into the future. Uh, if you have that, then everyone's always managing to that to that structural deficit, to that cliff that may be out there somewhere in the future. We saw that in the 90s, and we saw quite dis disciplined spending in the 90s because of that. We got a little far afield of that in the uh, mid uh, portion of the, of the last decade. Uh, but we're back. We've got people who are uh, in the Senate now, and, and I'm, I don't want to speak for the House, but we have people in the Senate now who are far more disciplined in their spending as well. So the point is, uh, taxes seem to be a mechanism to fund a government that we believe is already too large. There are other answers that we will probably uh, use uh, to make a, the deficit much smaller and to spread it out over many years. Becky again, no one else? Becky Bohr with AP for Senator Giesel. Um, House Resources, the co-chairs have uh, expressed a desire to um, take a look at SB 21 and to take a further look at oil tax credits. From your perspective, are there areas in either, um, uh, either regarding tax policy or tax credits that you think um, need to be changed or at this moment do you feel that the policies we have in place are um, sufficient and um, don't need adjusting well thanks for that question becky you know um <clears throat> i really appreciate senator hoffman's analogy of a dog team um my my kids each had a dog with three kids and uh two of the dogs were large males and the third one was a, a small female um, but that female was the fastest, <clears throat> excuse me, the fastest one. So if we wanted the sled to go faster, we put one of the males up front and the female behind because she'd nip at his tail. <laughs> and this, the, go, the team would go much faster. The Senate is a smaller, more nimble unit. And um, we have been looking at tax credits now for a couple years. You may recall in the summer of 2015, the Senate convened th that working group to look at tax credits. So what we um, see presented by the administration is a chart that looks like this, that says that tax credits, you know, are going up, the debt, and that's concerning. But we asked for the information to be parsed a bit more uh, clearly and accurately. And instead, what we see is a chart that looks like this. Now, during um, ACEs, uh, tax credits escalated significantly and then SB 21 happened and tax credits began to go down and that's what this shorter bar right here is now you see the bar went up again because oil prices went down there was still investing there were losses etc but then last year HB 247 was enacted and you see going forward the significant drop in tax credits the Senate has taken an aggressive approach and uh, reduced tax credits. It required a little nipping at the heels of the House that had a very different form of 247 last session. Uh, we led the way and, and are resolving that issue. Is it solved? It is not solved. We solved it through a process to establish a policy of decreasing these credits and paying the debt. The governor continues to make policy with a veto pen, and that has complicated this significantly. It's created a situation of having a credit card debt that we're not paying off, and so interest is increasing. It's building. Um, we we want to fix that, but we can't fix it unless the governor agrees to work with us. And so that's what I'm hoping for this session. Everything is on the table. We'll continue to look at tax policy, credit, tax credits, but we need the governor 
to agree with us to work through a process to establish a sound policy that is stable and predictable. Senator Giesel, has the governor participated in any conversations on oil and gas tax credits yet? Has he given any indications if he's willing to put down his veto pen as a condition of some sort of deal? The governor said no conversations with me. I don't know um, about conversations with the House. Steve? Uh, Senator Giesel. You want to wait just a second, get the microphone? Senator Giesel, what would you like to accomplish uh, with the competitiveness com um, review? And when's the last time that they've, you've had one? Forgive me if you had one last year and I don't recall. Um, thanks, Steve. So you're referring to the competitive, Competitiveness Review Board. This was established in Senate Bill 21. And it was established with that foresight of knowing that this was always going to be coming up, you know, re rewriting tax policy. It's been six times in the last 10 years. Um, so that, that board has continued to work. We want to get a report from them. Where, where are we now? Their report was actually due this month, but because of Senate, or excuse me, House Bill 247 last session, we significantly changed Cook Inlet credits. Their, re their report was supposed to be about the tax credits in Cook Inlet. They've had a very short time to do that. They asked for an extension. That's what we're hoping to hear about uh, this week in Senate Resources. Andrew. Andrew Kitchenman, Alaska Public Radio Network. Um, the spending limit uh, is would be tied to population growth and um, inflation. If the state's economy grows, then it would presumably grow faster than inflation, and uh, that would have the effect of shrinking the size of government in comparison to the size of the state's uh, uh, economy. Do you see that as a benefit of this bill, and what would your response be to people who might be concerned about that? As far as I know, the spending limit hasn't, the bill hasn't come out yet, has it? If, if I might, there are two bills that have been introduced, one in the House and one in the Senate, and they are constitutional uh, in nature. I haven't seen those bills yet, but Andrew, I believe that you're describing what they do. Uh, they haven't had their first hearing yet. I believe that um, we are continuing to work on a statutory one that uh, is going to take further refinement. So I would expect the constitutional conversation to be over two sessions and not just one. So it's a little bit early uh, to bring up concerns, but I, I know that uh, having the right base number is the primary conversation that we're having right now on the statutory consideration. And regarding the statutory versus the constitutional, I think we touched on this in the last press conference, but a constitutional spending limit wouldn't be in place for about three years. It wouldn't be uh, useful to us until about three years from now. And obviously that's a little bit late. Statutory, though it is, doesn't have the teeth of a constitutional limit, it'll be, uh, it'll be some strictures on, on how spending can uh, be, be carried out. The, you asked if it would be a benefit uh, regarding the population growth uh, mechanism causing more s state reductions. Um, honestly, most people believe government's too big, and if you have a, something like that, that would probably be a good thing. And I think as we go forward, if there are flaws in that before it reaches the Constitution, we should know, know about them, and we will have had many discussions uh, in, in, fin in not just finance, but in the different committees. And we may even have a year uh, to look at what the spending reduction does before we put something like that in the Constitution. We have time for about two more. <clears throat> Uh, Becky. Senator Kelly, uh, mm -hmm. Commissioner Davidson was tes testified before a subcommittee last week, and she said one of the, the concerns she had was that um, the reforms that are being pursued to Medicaid could be compromised if Medicaid expansion goes away. Can you talk ab about um, if you share those kinds of concerns? Do you, do you worry that if Congress takes steps to do away with expansion, that the reforms that you feel are necessary and are underway right now 
um, could in some way be, be compromised and efforts we're trying to make to get a handle on our system. Sure. I, uh, that bill was a very complicated bill, and I would not doubt what um, Commissioner Davidson said. However, there were many things in that bill that are going to stand regardless of what happens with, with expansion. Um, you are dealing with telemedicine. That's not going to change. Uh, how we deal with operating room procedures, excuse me, uh, emergency room pr procedures and, and uh, the, the flow in and out of those as far as who's eligible, that's not going to change. Uh, I think probably moving people over to uh, the Indian Health Care Services, not the health care, but getting the 100 percent um, for uh, tribal members, that's not going to change. Um, prescription drug uh, database and the benefits of that, that's not going to change. I could just go on and on, but I think that there were so many uh, s structural things in SB 74 that we changed that will remain no matter what Washington <coughs> does, it, it will remain a good bill. If we have to go then go back and review some of the things uh, because they have been changed, we'll gladly do that. Um, but I, I don't doubt what she says. I think it's it's worthy of if if what she says is they may be in jeopardy, some of those changes, I think they probably may be in jeopardy, and we just have to be uh, vigilant to make sure that we adjust, depending on what what Washington D.C. does. So about uh, about done. Yeah, one, more. one more, Nat, go ahead. Just uh, throw this one out there. Nat Hers with Alaska Dispatch News. I guess for Senator Giesel, since this is kind of your bailiwick, um, uh, when it comes to sort of what actually might be done this year with with oil taxes and tax credits, are it, are you planning on sort of waiting to see sort of what the House does? I noticed they have like a pretty interesting hearing schedule this week. Are you guys gonna do you expect to do similar things? Um, sort of what's your what's the kind of outlook you have there? You know, Nat, the Senate is uh, a body that takes in all the data and deliberates carefully. Um, we have a very veteran group of legislators in the Senate that have been through all of these tax modifications. Everything's on the table. I monitor the House Resources Committee, so I'm, I'm watching what they're doing. I always have, regardless of who was in the leadership, because we are a team. This is the legislature, House and Senate. Uh, so, so we'll be watching. We are having discussions. Um, I'm having discussions with colleagues as far as how they see the future uh, in terms of tax policy. So thanks, everyone, for coming. Uh, You've got uh, Senator Sedman's bill up on the uh, permanent fund uh, on Thursday. Uh, Senator Meyer's bill, SB5, is going to be up. I don't have a date on that. My apologies. Um, Senate Resources will be taking up Oil and Gas Competitiveness Review Board on Wednesday. So there's plenty of action to cover as, uh, as we go forward. And if you have any questions about what's coming up, Rena. Miller there is the person to ask, and we'll help you out as best we can. Thanks, everyone.